Welcome to this season's eighth edition of The Lead. I'm Isabella Leandri, let's get started. Local companies are bringing big name artists to Gainesville. Boosted Events, which was recently started by three UF seniors and Vivid Sky Vertical, are partnering to open the door for artists to consider Gainesville as an open air venue location. Steve Aoki and R.L. Grime are two artists that have already performed here in Gainesville, gathering audiences over 2,500 people. The artists performed at an unexpected new venue. To find out more, all you need to do is visit WUFT.org. A Girl Scout is giving back to the community. The lead's Jelena Esperto tells us more. Central Florida Scouts are collecting for their annual food drive, called Scouting for Food. After visiting houses in their neighborhoods and collecting donations of non-perishable food items, they met to sort the food and prepare it for distribution. We went last weekend and on Saturday and just took the bags and we got in our uniforms and we went out and we just knocked on the doors and said, um, hi, we are BSA Scouts and we're doing our largest annual food drive called Scouting for Food. Would you like to participate? In the Scouts are here now sorting the food they have worked all week to collect for the food pantry. The pantry will help serve several families in need during this holiday season. The distribution is carried out by the local Agape Food Ministry, a food pantry in Eustace, which distributes regularly to people in need. Eustace Scouts BSA Committee Chair Amanda Cudworth says the Scouts have been hard at work. And our unit, um, Troop 250, boys and girls, and Cub Scouts 250 are collecting for Agape House and they're here in Eustace and we provide food each year. We broke our record last year for the amount of food, but we're working hard this year to do it again. Um, the need has gone up and so our, we're trying to match that with our efforts. Eustace Agape Food Ministry Chairman George Van Hassel says it's been very rewarding to see the number of people they can help on a daily basis. We do have some regular people who are on like a fixed income, very, very low that if it wasn't for us, they would be eating dog food, to be honest with you. Vin Hassel says the Scouts are a tremendous help with this every year. When you do it to the least of these, you do it unto me. And that's our goal, to do it to the least of those, those folks that really need it. Now these are kids that are, instead of video gaming or you know running around and doing whatever craziness kids do, they're willing to give their time and their family has to give time as well. So it's a whole family involvement of trying to do something for the community. Jolina Sperdo, The Lead. We got football and hockey action for this episode of The Lead. Let's see what Harrison Smadjevitz has for us on the Gators and the Lightning. The Tampa Bay Lightning finished off a homestand this week. Offensive woes continued at the start of the week against the Carolina Hurricanes. Despite being heavily outshot, the Bolts were the first to get on the board when Steven Stamkos slapped a pass by Matthew Joseph to the back of the net. This would be the lone goal for the Bolts. Nothing else came together with the scoring for the Lightning, including an abysmal 0-4 night on the power play. The Hurricanes would tie it late and win 2-1 in overtime. Heading into Game 2, the Bolts took the ice for a rematch against the Panthers on Saturday. The Bolts offense nabbed the lead first, going up 2-0 with goals by Pat Maroon and Victor Hedman. But the Panthers slowly roared back, tying the game by forcing yet another trip to overtime. Unlike on Tuesday, the Lightning would overcome losing the lead when Brayden Point scored on a breakaway goal to win it. By extending their point streak, the Bolts were able to stay in fourth place in the Atlantic Division. Let's take a look at the slap shots inaugural three stars of the week. Andre Vasilevsky is the first star for his performance in net. Brayden Point gets a second star for the overtime goal, and Alex Kalorn is the third star. Now let's check in on Gator football. It really was home sweet home for the Florida Gators today. And based on the forecast we saw throughout the day, you can really say that they took the field to compete in all kinds of weather. The Florida Gators came back home after a long road trip to face the Samford Bulldogs. The game could have not gone further from expected, let alone did Samford open up scoring, but they managed to keep up with Florida in a shootout to lead at halftime 42-35. But the Gators decided they won't back down. They held the Bulldogs to 10 points in the second half and put up 35 more points to win 70-52. 
Quarterback Emory Jones set a school record for total yards in a game with 555 and tied the record for most touchdowns with seven. Florida head coach Dan Mullen says Emory really led the Gators on Saturday and his performance helped as a confidence booster. I thought overall not flinching in his ability to just kind of, kind of lead us, take, you know, kind of see. We took some, you know, take some shots down the field. Some kind of watch time. We're trying to take a shot down the field. They're just bailing out of it. He took stuff underneath, uh, got us into the right checks. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I, I know for him it's a, it, it's a confidence builder for, for how he played today. While it was nice for the Gators to be home, they can't get too comfortable as they have to go back on the road next Saturday to Columbia, Missouri to play the Mizzou Tigers. But fortunately for them, they get to wrap up the regular season right back here in the swamp for the Sunshine Showdown against Florida State. For The Lead, I'm Harrison Smadjevitz. That's it for this edition of The Lead. I'm Isabella Leandri. Thanks for watching.